what got you into geology, mining, and rocks in the first place? Well, that's a great question. I didn't grow up in a mining family or a mining town. I grew up in Pittsburgh, and um, I just always like spending time outside. So I had that. Um, I went to uh, college on an athletic scholarship, and um, I was a swimmer, so I really enjoyed that. But I was mostly uh, not thinking about my career. I was mostly thinking about what team I wanted to be on and who my coach was and things like that when I started college. So I started off on a certain career path, on a certain academic path, and I didn't want to do it. And then I needed to switch, and I thought about what else could I do and what did I really like. And I really like science. And I was able to um, finish again having a scholarship. You don't just figure it out. You get you know get to get in and out on your scholarship. So I um, I was able to switch to geology, and I really enjoyed it. And I, I liked the professors. I liked the subject, and um, it was it, it it doesn't maybe seem technical. It's extremely math and science oriented. I got to kind of explore all those different areas um, academically. And I had a, an advisor, I had a, a summer uh, internship and I had an advisor who said, you need to get a master's degree. So I did that right after that. And then was able to start working in the mining industry right after that. So then we take your career and you're really focusing on subject matter expertise and really being that mm -hmm. technical expert. Right. Uh, and then at some point you pivoted more into leadership roles. You kind of, you know, using kind of that analogy I often use, you moved from being a player on the field a little more of that head coach role where you're you know you're calling plays and you're making that shift what well, what was it beyond your conversation with your husband that kind of sparked that for you that made you say you know i kind of think i want to lead well i um my, when I, when, even going back further when i was a kid my dad had a business and he had started it when i was about five and i saw him run this business and it was a technical business but he was the president of this company and i so i kind of understood the hustle of working for yourself uh, and how much needs to happen if you're growing and committed to something. Um, and I never, you know, really followed in his footsteps. He was in a totally different field. But what I learned from that was that, uh, and also through sports, you actually have a lot to give. If you're interested in giving, you have a lot to give. And I always felt like I had a lot to give and I wanted to give beyond a technical role that I was doing. I thought I had more to learn and more to give to help um, grow a business. And so I think that's what was the underlying, why am I doing this? Um, and again, I uh, really would talk to my dad about my career and what I'm doing. And at one point I got a, a promotion kind of out of the technical world and into some business development and I'd gotten a nice raise. And my dad, by the way, worked in Silicon Valley. So uh, I said, oh, dad, I, I got this really nice raise. And he said, that's great, but you're worth four times that. And that just, I was like, what? <laughs> and so he, he really helped me be like, why are you limiting yourself? And you, you know, you think this is great. It is great. Congratulations. What do you want to do with business? Mm. You can grow, um, find your limits. And mm. if you find them, go find another place to find your limits or explore. If that's what you're just kind of in, you know, from inside propelled to do. So I would say, you know, why did I change? Is because I I have this entrepreneurial spirit. I have this desire to grow and build. I have this desire to improve and get better and be with people who want to do the same thing. And I can do that in this way through business by growing and changing my my career path. I don't know if that makes sense. Makes perfect sense. So uh, I've had on this podcast, we've had guests that have been in leadership roles in the medical industry, the medical world, military world, uh, large Fortune 500 company, uh, pizza, pizza, for example, um, you know, industrial parts, but we haven't really had industrial manufacturing or mining. So when you think about what makes leadership either really uh, rewarding or challenging, or frankly, just unique, in the mining industry. What are some of the things that for outsiders that don't know your world, uh, that they should? What, what makes it a little bit different or challenging? Well, they should know that we're almost everywhere, first of all, and they don't know it. And that's fine by the mining community. We don't <laughs> need to be uh, your worst nightmare. We're, we're happily mining in your community for the things that you need, whether it's 
you know, whatever, a zillion different uh, yeah. metals or industrial minerals or, or just sand and gravel. It's all, it's all very important and we should not be impacting you. That's the first thing I want everyone to know. But as a leader, um, what's exciting about leaving it is in a, in a mine. It's so cool to me to go to a quarry and see the what's what's called the mine development, the way the mine has looked over time. Because you don't just like start a mine and finish it in a day, it's decades. It can be over a hundred years that a mine's been in business. And to me, a, a well-developed mine looks really nice. Um, there's certain things that are easier about mining some types of rock than others, uh, but it went in a nice hard rock mine, it just looks really cool. It looks like it's an architect has been there and, and and in a way there has been, and someone's made a plan, but it's taken decades of people to follow this plan to make it efficient and effective. And I, I always appreciate um, everybody's role in the mine and making something work together over the long term. That's to me like the coolest thing about mining is, is seeing how many things had to go right for decades to have a productive mine still be looking great and running effectively. And so it sounds like in that industry, if we extend that a little bit, folks stay in that industry, in that world, maybe even working in that mine for a long time. Is that fair? Yeah, I, I, I have a coworker whose uh, grandfather worked for a mine for 42 years, and then he worked in that same industry. That, that's pretty pretty common. And um, mining, people that are attracted, are attracted to mining for different reasons. If you work in a mine, it's often because you like uh, to work outside and be outside. That's a big part of it. Mm. And you like to be independent. Um, you know, you're not on a line. You know, which is important, but it's just a different nature of work. You're yeah. you're expected to act very independently and, and make decisions remotely in, in a lot of cases. Mm-hmm.